Hello, you absolute legends. In the mid-90s, Doom single-handedly ushered in a brand new genre of gaming competition. It essentially gave birth to the art form we now know as speedrunning. There were two main ingredients that Doom provided that led to this explosion in popularity of trying to beat games as quickly as possible. The first was the end screen that seemed to encourage this type of competition. Not only did it show the time in which you completed each level, but it included a part time that John Romero himself set as a milestone to overcome. The concept of trying to beat someone else's time might seem pretty standard today, but this was pretty revolutionary at the time, and was definitely an idea that was outside of the box. The other important piece of the speedrunning puzzle was the ability to record and easily share demo files. These files are a fraction of the size of a video file, so they could be sent quickly over the sluggish dial-up connections most players possessed at the time. These demos perfectly replicate the original run, and are essentially as good as a straight video recording. Demos are still the standard method of documenting speedruns today, which is definitely not in line with the general trend of speedrunning. Nowadays, almost all popular speedrunning games will showcase live streamed attempts and live video footage of both the game and the runner. Given that the majority of Doom speedruns lack the live reactions and live gameplay people have come to expect, people have asked the question, how do we know someone is actually playing in these demos? With the rise of tool-assisted speedruns, people have become more and more suspicious of new records. The documentation of specific examples of cheaters has grown people's awareness of the possibility of cheating. It's practically a universal law that where there is competition, there is cheating. The attempt to gain an unfair advantage in order to win eventually manifests in every community at some point. Our goal is to hopefully identify it when it emerges. Doom is of course no exception, and today we will look at some examples of runners that have tried and failed to pass faked runs as legitimate. Through these examples, we will learn a bit about how runners may cheat, but more importantly, we will learn how Doom speedrunners can spot these cheaters and uncover the truth. I hope you enjoy. Before we start, I must include a disclaimer that this video is not about hating on anyone or stirring up drama. This is purely for educational and entertainment purposes only. I will avoid using full names or specific gamer tags for this reason. To begin, we are going to go all the way back to 1996. Around this time, there was one pretty major milestone that players were eagerly awaiting the completion of. This was a full game, no death and no save playthrough of Doom 2 on the Nightmare difficulty. This is a tremendously difficult challenge, and one that still had not been beaten more than a year after Doom 2's release. Some players even deemed this challenge impossible, simply too hard to complete. So it was a pretty big deal when the player Stefan released the first ever demo of this run being completed in May of 1996. The full run was 1 hour, 5 minutes and 20 seconds in length. Upon release, players were blown away by the achievement. But throughout the year, opinions on the run began to shift. There was something strange about the demo, something odd about the way Stefan moved. His control of Doomguy seemed too slow, too methodical, too unnatural a stark contrast from the way Doom runs are normally carried out. By the end of 1996, it was universally accepted that the run was tool-assisted. As other players became more experienced, shady, suspicious play became all the more obvious. The truth is that Stefan had been playing in slow motion. The telltale signs were plastered everywhere. He seamlessly avoided barrage after barrage of imp fireballs without a second's thought or any hesitation. His slow movement didn't seem to make sense, and with the movement this slow, you'd almost certainly be killed very quickly by monsters. Especially on the Nightmare difficulty, given that monsters respawn, meaning that the faster you go, the less monsters you ultimately have to deal with. Yet, Stefan breezed through levels effortlessly. His luck was abnormally high throughout the run, indicating that not only was he using slow motion, but was also abusing the save and reload function, something that is strictly forbidden in this category. It might seem like it would be pretty easy to record a run in slow motion and simply speed up the demo, but it's actually pretty damn hard to make it look realistic. To any experienced player, it is obnoxiously obvious when someone is playing in slow motion. The movements and reaction times are so vastly different from normal play. Contrast Stefan's slow, patient movement with the first legitimate, full nightmare run by the legend Thomas Pilger, achieved in October of 1998. 
This is the style of gameplay that you'd expect to see. It took Thomas more than a year of hard work to build up the skills and strategies to accomplish this groundbreaking run, and he managed to complete it in 49 minutes and 49 seconds, a truly remarkable feat that is still considered extremely difficult to this day. Stefan's Nightmare Run wasn't the only obviously tool-assisted demo, and he had a slew of other demos that showed the same hallmarks of cheating. As experience among players grew, so did their ability to identify and understand foul play. Stefan was the first high-profile player to have all of his demos removed from the database. Another high-profile player that had all of their demos stripped from the database for using slow motion was Andy. Andy was actually a programmer and was pretty well known for creating his own Doom tools. The kind of tools that enabled him to play and record in slow motion. His demos were a lot more sophisticated and believable than Stefan's, but again, to the experienced players it's extremely obvious. The jagged quick turns are a sure sign of slow motion abuse. It's actually pretty jarring to watch if you've seen Doom speedruns before, though to a new viewer the manic style of play might fly under the radar. On a technical level, it's actually pretty hard to prove that someone used slow motion to record their demo, and these cases are usually governed by the collective experience of the community. Splicing, or safe state of use on the other hand, has seen much more concrete examples of cheaters being exposed. There was a pretty recent example that occurred in 2018. This case was slightly more egregious because it involved money. On the Doom World forums, the administrator Linguisa posted a demo contest with a prize of $100 going to the winner. The rules were to complete Map 18 on Doom 2 as fast as possible, with a combined total for kills, items and secrets adding up to at least 100%. A couple of pretty big names entered, including King Dime, a full game specialist, and Looper, who we've discussed in previous videos. Needless to say, the competition was pretty stacked. Another player, Player M, was also in the mix, and the runners went back and forth lowering the time and optimizing the strategy. Looper set a new benchmark of 37 seconds, and he was pretty confident that this would not be beaten without the invention of a better strategy. In his own words, Looper grinded his ass off to get 37. So when player M came back with a 36, Looper's immediate reaction was one of excitement, as he had no doubt a new strategy had been created. But to his surprise, when he checked the demo, the exact same route was used, only with perfected movement. Player M was a pretty solid player, but in Looper's mind, his achievement of 36 seconds was a little above his pay grade. So he investigated the demo file in greater detail. One of the advantages of Doom demos is the fact that you can actually view the exact inputs that were used for every single frame. If we take a look at 4 Shock Blast's run of 8 seconds on Hangar, we can see what he was doing at every moment. The inputs are abbreviated and the value for each input is given. MF50 stands for Move Forward with a value of 50. SL40 means Strafe Left with a value of 40. These tools are useful for a few things, one of them being to see exactly how long each run was to the frame, which is why in this hangar run, we can see that it was 8.97 seconds long. But another important use is the ability to closely examine demos in order to spot anomalies that may uncover foul play. There were a couple of moments in the run that were definitely suspicious, if not flat out impossible in a real run. Looper sent his findings to the Doom World admin, who made a post in the contest topic. He stated, M. Your latest run exits on literally the last possible tick of getting 36, and there are several unusual input patterns in your demo. In the attached photos, he shows the anomalies. In this picture, we can see that he went from SR40 to SR50, then a frame later had zero inputs, which is what WT means, only to go back to SR50 a frame later. For those unfamiliar with SR50, it is a difficult value to reach that requires multiple inputs simultaneously to achieve, so it seems infeasible that a player's fingers would be able to lift off the keyboard perfectly and be placed back down perfectly in a single frame. This weird pattern of one frame gaps in inputs happened a couple of times throughout M's run, and they just so happened to take place just before areas that require high luck. M played ignorant in his response, leading to Linguisa stating, if you cannot offer an explanation for how you, the person pressing the keys, could have done this, then I can only conclude you cheated by re-recording the demo and resuming control at that particular point, because you want to win the money. M did end up confessing to the cheating, and voluntarily left the community, expressing regret. 
Demo analysis like this can also spot play that is too perfect or unrealistic. In order to pass a faked demo off as real, you have to have a very deep understanding of what is or isn't possible. At that point, it may even be easier to actually achieve the time, given that you'd need to already have the expertise to know what to do. Now, we will look at a player that had one of the funniest responses to being outed as a cheater. One of the fun side competitions players like to compete in on the Doom World forums is called Iron Man. Players play through various map sets to see who can make it the furthest without dying. Over the years, there was one player that seemed to completely dominate, winning the vast majority of competitions. Player K appeared to be an Iron Man master, and seemed to be able to beat incredibly difficult maps, even without having played them before. Over time, suspicions grew that K may be cheating, and after some deep analysis, it was none other than Zero Master who first came forward and made the claim of foul play. He outlined obvious use of slow motion during difficult fights, as well as evidence of re-recording. When something bad happens in a run, players can rewind the demo to before the mishap occurred and restart from that earlier point. But this becomes pretty obvious when the luck throughout the entire run is abnormally high, and it becomes statistically unreasonable for anyone to believe sections hadn't been played several times. If they are especially sloppy, as was the case with the previous example, Player M, this can cause out-of-place inputs where the players forget what they were pressing at that point, so when they restart the demo, different keys are pressed. Looper also came forward in the topic and provided evidence for the use of re-recording, pointing out holes in the inputs just like we had seen before, as well as evidence of slow-motion use. K's response was actually pretty typical for confirmed cheaters. He attacked Zero Master's character and accused him of being jealous. This is especially hilarious given that Zero Master is one of the most accomplished Doom players of all time, so it makes no sense at all for him to be jealous of any other player. He dodged the actual grievances that were laid out and didn't attempt to explain the anomalies at all, stating, You humor me greatly with your arrogance and contempt, a flood of accusations born from the poison of envy and smite of disrespect. I won't address the individual gameplay scenarios you've highlighted, as the foundation of your argument arises from jealousy. He continued, Thank you for revealing your true colors, seething with jealousy and enveloped by arrogance. You've lost what respect I had for you. If you've come to your senses, you will offer an apology. Take a good look in the mirror before you make such a disgusting accusation against a fellow Doom player, who has not caused strife and discord, but shows humility and respect with a carefree attitude. His post contained several overused tropes, including, I don't care what anyone else thinks. I have nothing to gain. I have more important things to do. I don't have the time, etc, etc. These have all been seen many times before. It really seems like there is some kind of template cheaters draw from when making these response posts. It is uncanny how specific phrases and lines find their way into every cheater's vocabulary. In any case, this was the last post Player K ever made, and he completely disappeared from the community. Doom houses the oldest speedrunning community in existence, period. The collective experience and expertise is enormous. If you are going to try and pass off a cheated run as real, you are in for a massive battle. Certainly, it would be seemingly impossible for a lesser player to do so, as you need very deep knowledge in order to understand what is or isn't normal at the top levels. Players can examine every single input, every single frame to determine if there are any tampering, making the task even more difficult. Thanks for watching you legends, I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.